and welcome to Fender Play Live. If you're tuning in for the first time, Fender Play is an online learning platform. We'll teach you how to play the guitar, the bass, and even the ukulele. Um, so every week we do Fender Play Live. This is a weekly live show where we talk about techniques, gear, you name it. If you've got questions, drop them in the comments and we'll try to get to them later on in the show. So today's topic, we're talking all about sparking your creativity. We've got uh, Nick Reinhardt from uh, Terra Mellos coming in to talk about stepping outside of our comfort zone later in the show. But first, we're joined by a very special guest. Hello, Alex Perez, everybody. Woo! Alex designed the brand new Powercaster, which he's holding in his hands here. And we're going to give you a first time exclusive look at this brand new guitar. Hi, Alex. Hey, how's it going? I'm going great. I'm pretty stoked about this guitar. I got to play it a little bit earlier yeah. today. Um, it's pretty rad. <laughs> awesome. Um, so anyway, um, so you've been Fender with, with Fender for a while, but um, how long have you been designing guitars? Um, well, for Fender, it's been a, a good about like 20 years or so, That's uh, good roughly. Run. I think when I first, when I was 14 years old and I started playing guitar is when I actually, that whole thing took over and I would take apart all my guitars. I used to have like, you know, six or seven of these uh, garage sale and swap meet guitars. Yeah. And then I would just swap necks and bodies and mm -hmm. pickups and whatever. And wow. So it kind of started from there. And then luckily now it's now it's my job. So I've been able to do it for a long time. And I, I was able to do it with artists as well and create artists' uh, signature models and oh, things cool. like that. Yeah. Right on. Have you any specific artists come to mind that you work sure. with? Sure. I mean, tons of them. Like currently in the line, like the John Five uh, Telecasters, um, right on. Uh, Jim Root. Mm -hmm. um, Jeez, I mean, well, a lot of them come through our, our shop, you know, sure. so yeah. That's great, that's yeah. great. So we're pretty excited, I'm pretty excited about this guitar. <laughs> um, so Powercaster, um, so here's a, a brand new design, you know, from Fender who's been making guitars for all these years. So this kind of pushes the boundaries of the Fender you kind of the, the stock, the staple designs bit, yeah, in yeah, yeah. several ways, and hopefully give people a, a unique and creative new instrument to play. So let's learn a little bit about that inspiration. Sure, sure. So first off, what, what's unique about this particular instrument? Well, um, it's it's kind of based off of the Jazzmaster body shape. Mm -hmm. um, it is, uh, it's a little bit shorter in the back, yep. and we got a, a more modern, uh, sleek kind of contour here, mm -hmm. and uh, also a little bit of cutting cutting out here and shaping for uh, access. Yep. Also uh, a nice little rounded, uh, you know, cut, cut away there. Yeah, the that's really plate. cool. And this particular uh, model's come in with a roasted uh, maple neck yeah. as well. Yeah, roasted yeah. maple neck. So I got a maple neck right here. Exactly, so this is the same wood Mm -hmm. Just gone through the roasting process, which uh, takes out all the uh, moisture content out of the wood. Cool, and keeps so, it more stable. Right on. Yeah. So, and, and so, what does that? How does that affect the tone? Well, you know, with the P90, um, it really helps. You know, make it nice and. You hear every note still. It's nice, even though even though I'm distorted and loud. Mm -hmm. It's it's very clear. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, so those two things really go well together. Yeah, I love the pickup configuration. So you've got a, you've got a, pick, a P90 in the neck position that you were just demonstrated. Yeah. And then a humbucker in the bridge position. Let's let's hear a little bit more of that bridge if you don't yeah. mind. Yeah. Yeah, and again with the high gain, I can still hear all the notes. Yeah, the everything cuts there. through really nice. Yeah. All right, I got to hear the split too. I got to hear. Oh both yeah, pickups, yeah. If you sure. don't mind. No problem. No problem. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, sounds great, man. Especially cool. going you. through the Mustang right there. Yeah, and, Mustang and, sounds awesome. What's the awesome. preset you have on there? That is number 17, basic Brit color. Sounds great. Um, did you have a specific player in mind when you designed the guitar? Um, I think partially there was a little bit of you know personal interest in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's another thing that uh, actually we haven't mentioned yet is this guitar is uh, 24 and 3 quarter scale. Yeah. So it's a little bit, it's right in between a Jaguar, which is 24 inch scale, right. and our regular Strats and Tellys, which are 25 and a half. Mm -hmm. I'm getting super techie now, sorry. That's all but, right. Uh, but anyways, this, this uh, shorter scale, I uh, thought, lended itself to the shorter body and mm -hmm. perfect for a first timer buying an electric guitar 
uh, for you know younger children and you yeah. know that kind of player. Basic rock machine. <laughs> I love it. A basic rock machine. I like I like the bridge setup there. That's that's yep. that's pretty unique, especially on on a Fender. I would exactly, say exactly. Yeah. yeah, for sure. You know, t typically this will come with uh, Jazzmaster or Jaguar. It comes with a you know vibrato arm and yeah, there's too many moving parts. So I wanted to keep it basic and simple. Yeah, yeah. Powercaster. Exactly. P90 humbucker. Man, that's yeah. that's great. Um, so when you're playing the guitar, uh, where does your particular inspiration come from? Do you, do, is there anything that kind of sparks creativity for you when you're sitting down and when you have time to play? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's a thing where, um, you know, whatever I see or hear, sometimes I'll, something will just, you know, snap and I'll be like, oh, I want to, I want to play that or I want to figure that out or learn that, yeah, you know, for sure. And then I'll go to the computer and, you know, yeah, so, you know, so many ways to, uh, get stuff online now, especially Absolutely. Fender Play. Yeah, it's Fender Play. We've yeah. got, uh, we've got stuff for Players of really any level. Uh, a lot of our stuff is geared for newer players, but we we do we are finding that a lot of intermediate level and uh, advanced level players are finding things on the site that help them kind of fill in the gaps, yeah. um, whether it might be a technique or something that they hadn't come across or whatever like that. And that's yeah. another great way to pick up a new skill and and yeah. break out of a rut. For example, um, you had a great suggestion earlier. If you're like if you want to if you want to just change the game. You said, <laughs> And yeah. You, what, what, what did you say? You said to like. Uh, well, you know, if you, sometimes you get uh, to the point where you're like frustrated and you're like, oh, I'm not getting any better at, you know, playing these chords or these songs. And then it's like, okay, well, if you want to see how it is, remind yourself what it was like when you first started playing. So take your guitar, <laughs> flip, flip it, it over. over. <laughs> now try and teach yourself how to play left handed. Upside down. Are you gonna like, play something right now? No way. Neither no am way. I. Okay, that's that's for home. That's homework, right? Is that some homework for everybody? <laughs> yeah, that could be homework. <laughs> no um, thanks. Now you said something else about uh, coming up with this, this design. Was yeah. it a little bit of trial and error? Sure, sure. Yeah, I've, I've made a, probably about eight different versions of this so far. Wow. So this one is the you know final. It it it's the one that's you know just exactly how I kind of wanted it to be. Yeah. You know. The, yeah. the woods uh, changed a little bit. The pickups changed. Um, just you know, you got to kind of go through a, a few failures before you come up with uh, your actual you know winning product. Yeah. So so and, and and how long has it been from inception to now? It's it's a real thing. Yeah, I mean honestly, it's probably been a good eight, seven to eight years. Wow. Yeah, just just because like this is a, was uh, started off as like my personal project is like mm -hmm. oh I want to try and do this kind of thing. And then as, you know, as time goes on and then, you know, we're looking to add new models to the line all the time. It's mm -hmm. like, hey, what, what's that? You know? Oh, look at that. Hey, cool. Check it out. And then, wow. here you go. Congrats, man. That's, yeah, that's, thank that's you. That's pretty amazing. Let's play a little bit of something sure, so people can sure. kind of hear this thing work. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> Man, it's been a pleasure talking to you, Alex. I want to give you a big thank you for Dude, coming by and talking me. about yeah. this great new guitar. So big thank you to Alex for coming by. We appreciate it. Yeah. Powercaster. Up next, we got Nick Reinhardt. But first, let's head over to the studio for a simple but effective way to get creative with Mr. John Dreyer. Hey, John Dreyer with Fender. We all go through periods where we need a creative jumpstart. So how do I kickstart my creative engine? Well, sometimes I'll change up my tone. I can add distortion or another effect. I can try an alternate tuning, but my trick for instant inspiration is using a looper pedal. Not familiar with how a looper works? Well, I just happen to have my Mustang GT amp here with the MTG4 foot switch that allows me to unlock the looper feature in the amp. Now you might have a delay pedal with a loop function or another looper at home. Feel free to try it right along with me. 
So I'm gonna grab my American Pro Strat here, plug in and experiment with some new stuff. Here we go. Let's first set up the switch to get into looper mode. I'm gonna tap on the switch here, this first one, and toggle down to looper on the bottom. So one, two. So now I am in looper mode. As you can see on the bottom here, the functions are record and dub, there's play stop, and then undo. In this example, I wanna practice harmonies and scales. So I'll record a short basic rhythm part, and then I'll loop it and then play new parts over it. I can record up to 60 seconds with the Mustang looper. So with the foot switch, I wanna select record dub. And when I hit that switch, it'll begin recording instantly. And if it's something I wanna loop seamlessly, I have to be conscious of coming in at the right time and ending it at the right time as well to get a smooth loop. All right, let's count this in, ready? One, two, three, four. <laughs> All right, hit play stop to end the recording. Let's listen. Okay, very good. Now we can add a melody line. Let's try that. I'm gonna hit record dub one more time. Okay. Now I can add a harmony to that melody line. I'll hit record dub one more time. You know, and if I don't like that part, I can always hit the undo. It erases the last take, and I can try it again. Okay. Now that I have those parts in there, I can even practice scales over top. And as you can see, you can also stop it, and then when you want to hear it again, you can hit play. And all the parts you just recorded are right back there again. So I'll hit stop. Again, a looper can help you practice timing. You can work out a guitar solo over a rhythm, practice scales over chord changes, build harmonies, or just create a wall of sound that'll have your neighbors knocking on your door. Some artists that are known to use loopers, Ed Sheeran, Reggie Watts, Andrew Bird, and Keller Williams, just to name a few. So plug in, hit some switches, turn some knobs, and get creative. You might just surprise yourself. For more information on the Mustang GT and the MTG4 foot switch, visit Fender.com. Cheers. You're not Alex, you're Nick. Where'd Alex go? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> uh, by the way, you know that Alex Perez? Yes. That guy's like, in the Fender universe, that guy's kind of like a big deal. So you were just talking to like, that was kind of crazy. Uh, tell me about For it. For all the, the viewers out there, that's like the guy. I just met him like an hour ago and I was like, this is crazy. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. I'm like. Right, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I cry a lot because that's just hurt, but uh, it's, it's gonna be okay. All right, we got our next guest, Mr. Nick Reinhardt, everybody. Yeah. yeah. Nick is a multi-instrumentalist uh, from the band uh, Terra Mellows, and he's played with Death Grips, Portugal the Man, and Nels Klein. Um, he's got a creative and a unique approach to playing, and once again, welcome. Thank you for having me. So happy Thank to you. be here. <laughs> so how long have you been playing guitar? Uh, I started when I was 11 years old. I put my first guitar on layaway. Mm -hmm. And fast forward 25 years, and here we are, Bam. sitting right here at Fender HQ. Beautiful. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. Thank Welcome. You. So any particular inspiration for you to pick up the instrument and see it through to 25 years? I would say probably 100% Kurt Cobain, anti-guitar hero. Right. Wasn't much of like a Hendrix kid. Mm -hmm. I was more of like, uh, the punk rock, like gross looking guys that their guitars go out of tune and you know, like it sounds weird and you know, whatever and loud and distorted and crazy. So yeah, uh, yeah that's kind of like where I came from and that's what made me want to pick up a guitar. Actually, Christmas when I was 11 years old, my stepbrother got a guitar and I probably got a video game or something like that. And I was like, oh man, 
I want that. And I want a guitar, so I went, you know, figured it out shortly thereafter. But like, yeah, yeah. I just like, the, from the moment I picked up like a guitar, being a little nerdy kid, I, I knew that like, oh, this is where like, I want to like put all my creative energy and, you know, yeah. doing, doing that sort of thing. I wasn't like outside playing football or like whatever sports or whatever. I just always want to be playing my guitar. For sure. I, I resemble that, that statement as yeah, far as playing nice, yeah, nice. football. I mean, let's put that away there. Sure. <laughs> Now, I know that he likes noisy, scrappy guitar players, but watch this. Oh, dee do, dee do, dee do, dee do. What, 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 what? Guy took Jeez, me to school dude. earlier today. You, yeah, you know, <laughs> you don't roll with the volume knob up. Like, number one lesson, you just always crank it down. You know what I mean? You're right, you're right. I pro. Crack. Pro, that's a pro. The first step to having a pro outlook. On you're right, guitar. man. I cry a lot. It's gonna be okay. <laughs> So we're talking about cre playing creatively. Um, so for you, all right, 25 years, do you ever get stuck in a rut? All the time. I would say, like probably every three times I pick up a guitar to be creative, I am in the rut that oh. we're discussing right now. Whoa. Yeah, Whoa. yeah, it just happens, you know? Like when you've been just like grinding and like, you know, doing this as your life, you know, yeah. like I don't, this is what I've dedicated my whole spirit to you know like it's yeah. not always like you know like fun well it's it's fun i guess even making it through like those like creative ruts can be fun and mm -hmm. like really satisfying once you get out of them but yeah of sure. course like that happens quite a bit yeah so do you have any kind of any advice for some of our we got a lot of new, newer players that are tuning in fender play members yeah um I, I don't know. It's like a weird thing. I, like it happens. It's it's never consistent with me sure. how to get out of there. You know, sometimes it works where you just kind of like play through it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. oh, this sucks. And it's just like play, 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 you know, or like practice, which I don't do like a whole lot of practicing. Practicing for me is just like sitting on the couch and picking up a guitar and strumming it acoustically and just seeing like what comes out of that, you mm -hmm. know? But I don't know. Like I, I get lost in my own head thinking about being creative a lot and getting like way kind of down about it and just Ooh. weird and like what I was saying earlier about like do I just need to like give up playing music and go apply to like a Target or something <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with that sure. but like you know it's just it's kind of like a freaky thing sometimes to think about but then yeah. then like there's growth that comes out of that stuff sure you know what I mean you like once you just kind of get you know sleep on it then you wake up the next morning feel feeling all refreshed or whatever or you know what happens a lot too is like put the guitar down and like, oh, I gotta go eat some pizza or something and walk away from this. And then 3 a.m. strikes and it's like, cool, let me go fire up the amp in my bedroom and like, I wanna play music at, you know, right now kind of thing. Which by the way, these are fantastic for that. Ah, uh, the Mustang? Yeah, oh yeah. yeah, are you kidding? Just like low volume bedroom amp is like really, really cool to play through. Killer, uh, late, killer. At late hours. Killer. So to keep the inspiration going, I heard a couple key things. Take a break sometimes, mm. get sleep occasionally, Pizza? And pizza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've got, you know, Fender Play, we've got a lot of new players that are using the program, as I mentioned, uh, intermediate level players. And sometimes we'll get somebody that's, that's, I've been playing on and off for 20 years, and sometimes like the structure of a lesson can kind of help kind of spark that sure. kind of, you know, Inspira inspiration to pick up the guitar more. Sure. You know, especially like people who have super busy lives and stuff like that. So I think that's a great thing to think about. Is sometimes you, you do have to kind of power through it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I took lessons probably for, I don't know, I, I, like my brain is so mushy when it going that far back and playing sure. guitar, but I probably took lessons for four or five years. Mm -hmm. And definitely there was a lot of it that was like homeworky things where I'm like, I'm not in school right now. I'm trying to have fun playing guitar. <laughs> but like, you know, it's just the classic thing. Like you, you build up those tools, yep. you know what I mean? You have the knowledge and the tools of like how to approach being creative on a guitar. And then you can like worry about like ditching all that stuff later. But sure. like definitely like, getting through those road bumps is like so crucial. And I was also saying like, I love feeling vulnerable picking up my guitar. I yeah. almost feel weird picking up the guitar and not feeling like a beginner or like, you know what I mean? Like, what am I gonna do with this right now? Like, I don't I don't really just like pick up a guitar and shred away and like, <laughs> check this out. You know, I'm like, I like that feeling of like, kind of like the unknown. Sure. You know what I mean? So like that, that always, 
kind of generates new ideas and new mm -hmm. creative paths to take. Absolutely, that's that's a that's a great point of of like, especially if you're approaching the guitar differently every time. Sure. So like on Fender Play, we've got five different genre paths where we start uh, players from the very beginning to get them playing. Uh, all the way up to like a advanced beginning level, and it's perfectly great for people to stay like on one course, like the rock or the country or the folk course. But it's also fine to like try a different genre, try a skill that you wouldn't expect that would be really cool. Like we don't teach um, finger picking in the rock path, but we do teach it in the folk path and in the pop paths. And so those types of techniques can really kind of like a totally. You want to like feel like a beginner? Try jazz music. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, 25 years and I try and play jazz, I'm like, oh, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> it's a, yeah, that's a whole other ball of chickens. Yeah, of course. And that's a technical term. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, another, another thing that people can try, and we've got a few of these lessons um, on our site, is just tuning your guitar differently, like playing in an alternate tuning. Wait, May, may I? Wait, wait, you have? You say you have a power caster already set up in an alternate tuning other than standard? Okay, so. This is so amazingly convenient. One of my favorite bands of all time is a little band called Sonic Youth, hello. Uh, and very known for alternative tuning. Sure. And so like I uh, actually, when, when I very first concerts ever, I was 12 and I saw Sonic Youth at Lollapalooza and was like, whoa, what is this? This is crazy, what are these sounds? But anyways, if you want to learn a Sonic Youth song and you've been playing for 25 years, it's like, oh, good luck. You got to retune this thing and get into some weird, like, unknown territories. Yeah. So I just dropped this into a Sonic Youth tuning, but, like, listen to this. Whoa. Now, that's, like, incredibly ugly sounding, maybe, or, like, dissonant and strange, but, like, that's a new thing, right? Yeah. That you can, like, you know, try awesome new things. But, like, I think this is, for all the kitties at home, it's, like, F sharp, F sharp, G, G, A, A. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> So, F minor flat nine. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> Let me Google that real quick. Yeah. Well, you know, we got, uh, all right, so if you play the chord. That's like a Sonic Youth song. Yeah. Just about. <laughs> it is about, just yeah. about that. But alternative tuning's absolutely like, you feel like a deer in the headlights no matter what. You know, and you don't even, you can make up your own tuning. Sure. Absolutely, like I've done that. Yeah. Just like, don't even like Google alternative tuning. Just tune your guitar <laughs> to what sounds good to you. Right. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. That, that's like a really fun, interesting way. It, it, was, it was brutal watching you play all that cool stuff and it's like, I got nothing. I'm just gonna listen. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Don't be sorry. Yeah, blame it on those dudes. That's not my fault. <laughs> the other thing that I, I know about you is that you you love different coming up with different sounds, different tones. You probably got a quite quite a wide uh, pedal collection. Yeah, going on. yeah. I kind of like found myself all of a sudden in the last couple of years with this wall of just crazy stuff, and so like that that's like a daily occurrence for me sure. of just like pulling something off the shelf, plugging stuff in, doing different combinations of pedals, and then that leads to like way like fun, creative, inspirational paths. Absolutely, like the pedal world. I, my very first pedal was a DoD Classic Fuzz, and then I think I got a Phaser right after that, right. and then like some old DoD Looper pedal, like a delay that could do some looping, mm -hmm. and you know, that like was when I was really like, oh my God, this is so crazy, you know, what you can do with a guitar and pedals. Sure. You know? So yeah. Tons of inspiration and like creativity. Yeah, there. so just changing your tone can be a huge <laughs> component yeah, to that. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's play a little bit of something. Not yeah. not in this tuning though. Please no. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> All right. What do you think, Nick? Let's be creative. You want to be creative? Yes. All right. I'm gonna do a little wherever the hand lands. <laughs> So I'll do whatever the hand lands. Oh, dang it! It's the same thing. Ah! I keep finding the same note.
Did we record that? I, did we record that? Uh, I think we need to put out a record. I think so. You ready for this? All right. Well, maybe on the next episode of Fender Play. <laughs> how to make a record. How to make an experimental record. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we'll call it Wherever the Hand Lands. Yeah, jazz. Wherever the Hand Lands, jazz. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's some chords right there. Um, you didn't hear that from me. You didn't hear that from me. Um, so, hey, we assign homework every week. So if you're just tuning in, if you're part of the play community, you guys know that we assign homework every week. If you're not, you can still try it on your own anyways. So if you're a beginner, just learn something new, maybe a new riff, chord, or skill, perhaps in a, new genre, in a genre path that you haven't explored yet. I have a suggestion. Yes. Do what you just said, learn a new riff, mm -hmm. and then learn it backwards. Whoa. Right? That's intense. There you go. That's my addition to the idea. Yeah, I love it. it. Please. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> if you're at a more intermediate level, maybe just try playing something in an alternate tuning. Even if it's just drop D, that's, that can change things up considerably. See if you can find a chord that you're familiar with in that alt tuning, you'll, alternate tuning, you'll have to change the fingering. Don't be afraid to try new things. Right. Right? That's what this, it's art. Yeah. We're not doing math homework here. Right. We're doing art. So right. Like, Try new things, explore. God, yes. God, yes. I love it. So if you're a little bit more advanced or an evil genius, try doing, speaking of creativity, make up your own thing. Make up your own song, your own riff, or just even a chord progression, applying a new skill or playing it in a tuning that you're not exactly comfortable with. That's cool. I will say I had been playing guitar for probably five or six years before it even occurred to me to write a song. It was really, I think back on that all the time, like, dang it, I wish I would have, like, started sooner. But, like, absolutely, another really, really cool thing is, like, you can write a song. Yeah. It doesn't matter, like, what level you are at that. Like, you know, there's whatever, like, Pixies, Frank Black from the Pixies. I've, like, he was writing songs when he was a kid, and they're still playing them 40 years later or whatever at Pixies show. So it's like, you can write a song. Yeah. Do that. Write a song. Right? You a evil song. genius. Yes. Hashtag homework. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're trying to learn all those skills, remember at Fender Play, we've got thousands of song skill lessons. Just jump in, check it out, see if there's something new for you. I think it's time to move on to the weekly giveaway. <laughs> Are you ready for my drum roll? Yes. So one perk of being a member of Play is that each week we give away your choice of a free guitar, amp, bass, or even a ukulele, just for taking a single lesson. So Nick, would you like to tell the world who today's lucky winner is? I'm so happy to announce that Roland N, you are the winner. Yes, man. Yeah. Killing it, Roland. Yeah. So remember, the more lessons you watch, the more chances that you have to win some awesome gear. Okay, so now it's time for a little uh, Q&A, a little question and answer from the community. Uh-oh. So we've got a few questions. So Billy's got a question. Maybe you could read it off. Billy wants to know, on those days when practice isn't going so well, is it better to go do something else, or is it better to keep at it, but maybe at a slower pace? We kind of like address that, huh? Yeah. Wow, we, he's we, like reading our minds. <laughs> um, I, that's so situational. Yeah. Because there's some times where you do want to power through it. Sure. But then there's, I mean, it's, then you're just like, I get out of this. I, I'm going to go mm -hmm. like walk my dog or something and then come back and, you know, feel it then. So yeah. I, don't, I don't really know how to answer that. How would you answer that? I, I think I would say something similar. I mean, it's, it's like you said, it's funny you mentioned dog walking and sometimes like, little melodies will pop into my head when I'm walking the dog and it's like, oh man, I gotta get home and, or just get my phone out and record it and sing it and then Let's try go and with find this. it on the guitar. Let's go with walk away. I'm gonna commit to saying walk away because that's exactly what you just said. Mm -hmm. You might walk the dog, you might go for a walk. It's raining here right now. You might be like just outside checking the mail and you know, you're getting a vibe from being outside and getting all wet and that might inspire something. Nice. Final answer. Love walk, it, walk love away. it, love it. Um, let's see, and it's time for shout outs to some of our users. So, so, some folks are posting some really cool stuff. I wanna say big ups to Daniel Engman, who tried out his new looper pedal. Awesome. What looper pedal did he get, I wonder? I don't know. I can't, I'm gonna do some 
searching to find out what you're, what you're doing, Daniel. <laughs> what are you doing, man? <laughs> also, please, we cannot forget Bill Nitch, who just finished rock level five and learned Ziggy Stardust. Awesome. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Great job, congratulations, Bill. <laughs> um, updates on Fender Play, we're adding new stuff to the site all the time. We got a couple new songs on the site. We got Strawberry Letter number th 23 from the Brothers Johnson, if you recognize this little. I'll just tease that. And also, Smoke on the Water, we got this, right? Ready? <laughs> What, how old were you when you learned that riff? 12. I think I was 11. Yeah. There you go. 12, yeah. Also, we got some new riffs on the site. We got Somebody's Watching Me from Rockwell. So we got some great stuff we're adding every time. We got to wrap it up right now. I want to give a big thank you to our special guests, Nick Reinhardt and Alex Perez here. Thank you so much. What a great show. Thanks for being here. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Um, next week, you asked for it. We're going to give you a live bass lesson. So I'd like to invite you to keep practicing, and we'll see you next time. How about a big, fat G chord? Go!